Have you wondered why it can be so hard to make or find new friends in life? What is it that helps us build better and stronger relationships with people? If this is something that you find yourself thinking about, stay tuned for the next session of The Mobile Sanctuary. Welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary Where the world can find their way In the quiet of your heart You're never alone Welcome to the place you call Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. Thank you for joining us. Here is your host, Pastor Phil Diaz. Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary. I'm Pastor Phil Diaz, and this is Church Anywhere. All right. Well, we are so happy to have you with us here tonight as you join us on the session. So before we dive into the topic, I want to be able to encourage you to help us expand this amazing online community and this ministry. So please hit that subscribe button or the follow button. Please make sure you can hit those share buttons as well and share this with a friend, a coworker, someone that you just know in your life that would benefit from hearing this tonight. Also, we would love to hear from you, all right? So make sure you drop us a comment. And uh, whether that's just a thought, a question, a prayer request, we would love to be able to hear from you here tonight. All right, so we're gonna jump into the session. Let's get ready, let's get excited, and let's get pumped for another session of The Mobile Sanctuary. What is a relationship? Is it just a word, a connection, a fleeting bond between two souls? Relationships are the lifeblood of our existence, the unseen threads that tie us together in the tapestry of life. We meet, we laugh, we cry, we connect. But have you ever wondered why these connections, so full of promise and potential, sometimes crumble apart? Why the hands that once reached out in love now pull back in silence? Why does something that feels so strong suddenly feel so fragile? Maybe it's because relationships are not just built on grand moments, but on the little things, the soft words spoken, the listening ear, the kind gestures that say, I see you. It's the late night conversations, the shared dreams, and the quiet moments of understanding. It's the everyday choices we make to reach out when it's hard, to stay when it's messy, and to forgive when it's painful. But somewhere along the way, the thread frays. We forget to nurture what we once cherished. We let pride speak louder than peace and we let misunderstandings build walls where bridges once stood. We stop trying, we stop listening, we stop caring. The relationship starts to unravel piece by piece, word by word, until all we have left are the remnants of what once was. It's in these moments of brokenness that we find the raw truth. Relationships require work. They need tending like a garden pruning back the weeds of resentment and watering with the simple acts of kindness and grace. And sometimes it feels easier to let the garden wither than to keep cultivating what feels lost. But here's the truth. A relationship, even one that seems beyond repair, can be rebuilt. It can bloom again. How? By returning to the basics, by embracing humility, the kind that says, I'm willing to let go of being right so I can be close. By choosing gentleness, even when anger seems justified, by picking up the pieces with forgiveness, acknowledging that none of us are perfect and all of us need grace. It's about finding the courage to extend a hand, even when it's hard, and to say, let's try again. Because relationships, at their core, are a reflection of who we are and who we aspire to be. They are mirrors that show us not just the good, but also the places where we can grow. And when we commit to growing together, we find that the connections we build are not just fleeting, they are lasting. So, if you find yourself standing in the rubble of a strained relationship, don't give up. Start with a simple act of love, a kind word, a genuine apology, a willingness to listen. Brick by brick, you can rebuild. And what you create will be stronger, deeper, and more beautiful than before. Because at the end of the day, relationships are worth fighting for. They are worth the effort, the tears, the joy, and the journey. And no matter how many times they fall apart, with a little grace, they can always be put back together.
Have you ever felt the strain of a difficult relationship or wondered how you can make your connections with other people stronger and more fulfilling? You know, relationships are at the core of all of our lives. You know, they, they help bring us hope and joy and purpose and sometimes even challenges. But what does the Bible say about building better relationships with people? What does the Bible really say about building better relationships and friendships that are stronger and healthier? And so tonight we're going to be able to explore this question together. We're going to uncover some biblical principles and practices that we can use in our lives to help us create and maintain relationships and friendships that honor God and bless those around us. And so tonight we're going to begin by looking at a powerful scripture from the book of Ephesians as we dive into this topic of how to build better relationships. Let's check it out. Our main scripture for tonight comes from Ephesians 4, 2 through 3, which says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. This verse offers us a roadmap for building stronger relationships, one that is marked by humility, gentleness, patience, and love. Paul emphasized these qualities because he knew that relationships are not always easy. But when we approach each other with a spirit of humility and patience, we reflect Christ's love and maintain the unity that God desires for his people. But how do we live out these qualities in our daily interactions? Let's dive deeper and see what this looks like in practice so we can gleam a deeper understanding. And now back to Pastor Phil. Imagine the Apostle Paul sitting down with his parchment and quill and then just feeling the weight of the Holy Spirit's inspiration that's just simply heavy on his heart. He is writing to the believers in Ephesus, a community that's struggling to live out their faith in a very messy, very divided world. Now, does that sound familiar to any of you out there? I know it can to me. But now let's just go a little bit deeper with this imagination and this thought, all right? Now, this church in Ephesus definitely has its differences. There's all kinds of cultural clashes. There's personal conflicts and a whole lot of spiritual baggage. But Paul, knowing all this, he doesn't just simply sugarcoat the message to the church there in Ephesus. He is saying hey, <laughs> we're going to drop the whole pride thing. We're going to put down our defenses and humility and gentleness aren't simply weaknesses. They are going to be the secret sauce to our real relationships in life. In fact, it helps create space for trust, connection, and healing. Now that's the Pastor Phil version of that. But you know, Paul, he doesn't just simply stop there at you know, thinking of humility and gentleness. He really, he goes a little bit deeper. He, he knows that relationships aren't easy. And so he calls us to live in patience and to bear with one another in love. And, and that's not just simply like putting up with people just for the sake of putting up with people. It's something deeper than that. It, it's, it's staying in it when even things get tough and choosing to love people that sometimes can be unlovable, <laughs> but choosing to still love them. You know, Paul's message is clear and it's real. This is what I think he's simply trying to say is that relationships are built in the trenches of patience and love. And we as believers have to learn how to stick together even when it's messy. Amen? And if you love that, say amen in the chat, okay? Now, I think he's also trying to simply say this, and he takes it up a notch. He simply points us in the ultimate goal, which is unity, all right? Say that with me. Unity. 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 And it's not just any kind of unity. There's only one kind of unity that the Apostle Paul has set his focus and his goal on. And that is the unity of the Spirit. All right? That is believers being under the unity of the Holy Spirit, being held together by the peace, love, joy, kindness, patience, gentleness. All of those things, all of the fruits of the Spirit helps hold us together. Now, this isn't just some sort of passive thought. All right? All right? We, we need to be able to learn how to get along with people in this life, all right? It's a daily decision to choose harmony over hostility, amen? I want to say that again. It's a daily decision to choose harmony over hostility. And it's seeking to understand before demanding to be understood, all right? It's putting in the hard work sometimes of being a peacekeeper when everything around us is just simply going crazy, and so Paul's reminding us that this is the kind of unity that 
he believes the Holy Spirit is laying on his heart to speak about. And I believe that this is the kind of unity in this world today, in our time here today, that's going to help us to stay unified. And sometimes it isn't always easy. People are not easy to deal with, all right? But what makes it easier is when you let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you in your thoughts and conversations with people. And trust me, people are worth it. So the question I have for us here tonight is this. How do we actually live all of what we just talked about out within our lives? Ooh, that's a big question, all right? So I'm going to say it again. How do we actually live this out in our lives? Drop us a comment in the chat. As Pastor Phil shared, Ephesians 4, 2-3 teaches us to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. But how do we live out this kind of life? How do you live out unity and peace with your friends, family, or neighbors? Drop your comments and thoughts below in the chat. All right, we are back and we are going to talk about our first main point here tonight, and that is embracing humility and gentleness. You know, strong relationships begin with a heart of humility and gentleness. And when we approach other people with these qualities, guess what? We can create an environment where trust and respect can flourish. So consider the words here in the scriptures in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, where it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Amen? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. You know, one of the most challenging uh, things that we can do as Christians is to be called to learn how to put other people first <laughs> rather than ourselves. But the Bible is very clear about the positioning of our lives. And I think that this verse has so much to help us to be able to speak to us here tonight about how to value other people above our own selves. Now, of course, the million dollar question is, how exactly do we do that? Well, we do it in the same way that Jesus did, by valuing other people's needs, by learning how to be present in their circumstances, by learning how to be a listener and not just a talker, and by choosing to be selfless in every interaction. You see, when we're able to invest in people in these sorts of ways, there's all kinds of wonderful things that can blossom and grow out of it. The problem is we live in a very me-centered world where being you know, selfish is basically the rule of thumb for the day. And it feels really out of place to learn how to be a servant as opposed to being the one who is to be served. But you know, as believers and as Christians, we are set to a higher standard. And that higher standard includes servanthood. That higher standard includes knowing that we are defined not by ourselves, but by God and his love that's been poured into us. In fact, our understanding of love is completely rooted in his example, where Jesus put us first by sacrificing himself on the cross and rising again from a borrowed grave, thus showing us the ultimate act of selfless love. You know, Philippians 2 verse 3 is one of those verses that can either be extremely challenging as we examine ourselves within the context of that verse, or it can be a verse that simply means nothing to us and we move on without conviction. I've heard that before. Yeah, that's nice. Put that on a t-shirt, but that's not for me. And unfortunately, as Christians, we, we do that sometimes with the word of God. 
where we're like, that may apply to someone else, but that doesn't really apply to me. I'm here to tell you that the word of God applies to all of our lives. Amen. And I believe that this word has a lot to speak to us here today within our world. And, you know, it's one of those verses that we're either going to listen to or we're going to deny. But I'm just going to simply lay this very plainly out there for you. All right. Life is so not just about you. There, I said it. Life is so not about you. Now, what is life about? Life is all about Jesus. And if life is all about Jesus, then don't we want to be able to try to bring other people into that experience? All right. And we can only do that when we learn how to value people more than ourselves. All right. We must learn how to set our priorities straight. And so very simply, this is how I set my people priorities straight. All right. Number one, we have to love God first. Amen. We have to learn how to love God first in all that we do. Number two, we have to love people. In fact, the scriptures and even Jesus said we are to love others more than when we learn how to love ourselves. And number three, we have to learn how to love to be used by God in all capacities. This could mean discipleship. This could mean evangelism. This could mean using your gifts and talents in all, all kinds of different ways for the Lord. But these are the priorities of life, all right? Love God, love people, and learn how to be loved to be used by God. So how do you practice this within your life? Do you practice humility or do you shy away from humility? You let everybody know that you are the greatest thing that God ever made. All right. So how do we actually practice that within our lives? All right. Share your thoughts and comments in the chat below. As Pastor Phil just stated, how do you practice humility and gentleness in your relationships? What keeps you from being humble or valuing other people first? Let us know your thoughts and drop your comments in the chat below. All right, we are back and we're going to talk about our second point, and that is practicing patience and forgiveness. You know, relationships require patience, especially when conflicts arise and when others really let us down. But, you know, patience alone isn't enough. We also need to be willing to forgive. I want to say that again. We must be willing to forgive. Amen. So Colossians chapter one, verse three says this. It says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. You know, forgiveness is essential for healing and strengthening our relationships. It's about letting go of all of that resentment, all of that hurt, all of the anger, all of the pain, and choosing to love even when it's difficult. Amen? And when we forgive, we reflect the heart of God and we help pave the way for reconciliation and a deeper connection with that person. Now, I want you to be able to think for a moment, all right? And I'm going to lean in a little bit. Who has really hurt you in your life? All right? Think about that. Who has really hurt you? Who has said things to you in your life? that have really affected just how you think, how you feel. It's really hurt and wounded you on the inside. It's really hurt and wounded you in, in places inside of you that you didn't know even existed. But what they said has just completely destroyed and demolished you. Who has really hurt you? Is it something that was said 
many, many years ago? Was it something that was just said last week? I want you to think about that. I want you to be able to take a moment, all right, and take all of that hurt, and take the pain, take the words that were said, and I want you to be able to pray to the Lord and ask God not just to help you, but to forgive you for how you feel towards that person. And I want you to be able to leave all of that hurt, all of the things that were said, all of it that is in the past, to leave it in the hands of the Lord. Today is a new day, church. <laughs> and today is filled with new mercies and grace from the Lord. Now, some of you may feel really lighter and bubbly on the inside, maybe after asking the Lord for his forgiveness. But some of you are like, man, I don't really feel a change. I don't really feel different. I just want you to know it's not always about how we feel on the inside. And just because how we feel on the inside doesn't match to what we just did doesn't mean that God isn't even working and moving. He sure is. He's working and moving through your life and through those situations. It's not simply about how we always feel, but what life is all about is learning how we obey the Lord in obedience. And God knows, God knows that forgiveness is essential <laughs> for healing and restoring our relationships, not just with him, but also with other people. I mean, think about it this way. Jesus forgave every single bad and awful thing that you ever done in your life. Think about that. Think about every single thing that you've ever done that has disgraced the name of the Lord. Think about every single sin that you've committed, every single curse word, every single lie, every single time that you cheated, every single time that you've had a thought within your head that wasn't really <laughs> a thing that you should be thinking about, but there it was. Think about all the things that you took action because of those thoughts. Think about all of the weight of the sin that we have within our lives. Sometimes we even hurt people and we don't even know it. Sometimes we hurt God <laughs> and we may not even realize it. And this is where we need to have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit within our lives to lead and guide us into knowing what we are doing. It's called the sins of omission. Sometimes we don't even know that we're doing it. But what I'm trying to simply say here with all of that in mind is that Jesus forgave you for every single thing that you've ever done against God, every single thing that you've done against him. Things that maybe even nobody else knows about, but you did it and he knows. And he did all of that on the cross. He forgave every single one of us. And as we see the compassion and forgiveness of our Lord, so should we be able to forgive people because as believers in Christ, we want to be uh, forgiven by God, but we also want to be in right relationship with him and also with the people around us. You know, if we are always in a mode of being unforgiving, I'm just going to simply say nobody's ever going to want to be around you because you're always going to be harboring something and carrying something with you, some sort of baggage, and it's going to kind of find its way and just simply said, no one's going to want to be around you because it's always going to be, woe is me. And the word tells us that we are to bear with each other and to forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. All right. I know life is tough and I know sometimes we just feel, woe is me. <laughs> But sometimes we also need to learn how to bear those things with other people. And sometimes it just begins at the source. What has hurt you? What has pained you? And how can we go about correcting that with the Lord and correcting that with other people that are involved in that situation? So what's your experience with practicing patience and forgiveness in relationships? All right. We would love to be able to hear from you. So drop your thoughts, drop your comments in the chat below. Let us know how we can best be able to know uh, your experiences with all of these things. Drop those comments in the chat. Pastor Phil just gave us a powerful word for learning about forgiveness. So what's your experience with practicing patience and forgiveness in relationships? Is there something that holds you back from moving forward? Drop your comments and thoughts below.
All right, we're back with our last point. And we're going to be talking about pursuing unity and peace. Unity and peace. You know, strong relationships, strong friendships are marked by unity and peace. Amen. And the Bible calls for us to work actively towards these qualities in our connections with others. You know, Romans chapter 12, verse 18 encourages us. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And I love that verse. Live at peace with everyone. It doesn't mean that you have to agree 100 um, percent with everyone on everything. All right. We're all going to have our little bit of differences, but we should not let any of those differences ever get in the way of us learning how to live at peace with each other. And so this reverse, you know, it, it reminds me of learning how to maintain peace within the relationships that we have with people around us, whether it be your family, whether it be your coworkers, whether it just be standing in line at the speedway trying to get a Slurpee. OK, we need to learn how to maintain peace in our relationships with other people. And it means willing to uh, be able to have difficult conversations at times to seek understanding and learn how to prioritize harmony over just simply being right. You know, I know a whole lot of people in my life that will fight to the death on just being right about their opinion. It has to be their way. And if it's not their way, oh, you're wrong in so many different ways. And trust me, it's very difficult to manage good, healthy relationships with people like that, because I sometimes feel when people are so bent that way, they don't want to have better relationships with people. It's all about themselves. And we already talked about that in the first place. We don't want to make life just all about us. We live for a higher purpose and a higher love, and that is showing the love of Jesus Christ to others. But this verse, it just reminds me that we have to learn how to maintain peace. And we do that in all sorts of different ways as believers. Because when we pursue unity and peace, we honor God and we strengthen the bonds that we have as we share that with other people. All right. And again, sometimes we have to learn that it's OK to disagree, but it's never OK to say, you know, the way I think is better than the way you think. We hear that so much within our world and it just divides whether it's politics, whether it's the color of a carpet in a church, all right, whether it's this or that, it leads to so much division. Can you have an opinion? Absolutely. But it doesn't always mean that our opinion is the best. <laughs> so we have to learn how to keep ourselves in check. And how do we do that? Well, again, we have to understand is what we're trying to project a viable opinion that helps reflect the heart of God or are we going to be doing that just to hurt somebody? Oftentimes, Christians use this to twist scriptures around to be able to get their way, and they hurt people in the process. And I've seen that happen in the church where they'll take a Bible verse and they just basically use it as a way to hurt someone, you know. Um, and I've seen it to where it's like, well, I'm so holy and righteous uh, here's this verse, and you need to know you're just a dirty, rotten sinner, and you don't even need to come to church here because you're just ruining the whole vibe going on in this church. I, I've had people, maybe not in those words, but I've had people say that, and then they'll use scriptures, and, and then and then they can't keep a church, and they wonder why, all right? Um, I've seen that. Sometimes we need to learn to be able just to be at peace with people, <laughs> and it doesn't mean that being at peace means we are agreement with everything. But it means that if there are things that we feel in our spirit that maybe we're not in agreement with, that gives us an opportunity to present those things to the Lord. Let the Lord speak to you in your life when you feel like you're in disagreement with others. Amen? Because I truly believe the Lord will help set our path straight. All right, so let's drop some comments here in the chat. You know, how do you pursue peace and unity in your relationships? You know, do you like to go around and tell people, that you're always right and they're always wrong, which, by the way, is wrong. Don't do it. All right. But are you? Are, do you see that? Do you see that spirit within you at times? Um, drop those comments in the chat. Maybe you're the opposite. Maybe you want to be a peacemaker. You know, let us know. How are you able to, um, you know, bring peace in your relationships with others? Drop those uh, comments in the chat. Let us know what you're thinking and uh, just let us know. All right. How you best pursue peace and unity in your relationships with people. Drop that in the chat. As Pastor Phil just stated, 
How do you pursue peace and unity in your relationships? Does it come naturally for you or do you find yourself praying about it a lot? Drop us a comment down below and tell us your story. Here's some next steps and practical ways that you can take to help build stronger relationships in your life. Number one, commit to humility. Make a conscious effort to put other people's needs and perspectives before your own, all right? Learn how to practice listening and learn how to practice showing true empathy. Number two, choose forgiveness. When conflicts arise, choose to forgive quickly and completely. Remember that forgiveness is key to maintaining a healthy relationship, not only with people, but also before the Lord. Number three, seek peace. Work actively to create an environment of peace and unity in your friendships and your relationships with other people. Be willing to engage in honest and loving conversations that can help promote better understanding. Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gift of relationships and for the way you use the people in our lives to shape us, challenge us, and draw us closer to you. Lord, we are grateful for the love, patience, and grace you show us every day through your Son, Jesus. You've given us the perfect example of humility and selflessness. And we praise you for the way that, Lord, you pursue us even when we don't deserve it. Your love is relentless and it changes us from the inside out. God, we humbly admit we don't always get it right. We can be quick to judge, slow to forgive, and often let our pride and impatience get in the way of meaningful connections. And too often, Lord, we allow even our insecurities, our past hurts and frustrations to dictate how we treat other people. But Lord, you have never given up on us. So forgive us, God. Forgive us when we fall short and give us the courage to step out of our comfort zones to love other people like you love us. Help us to see people through your eyes and respond with the same grace you continually extend to us. Thank you, Lord, for the incredible opportunity to build relationships that honor you. We lift up our mobile sanctuary community and family to you, and we ask that you strengthen the bonds between all of us that gather online. Help us to become people who lift each other up, can speak words of life and encouragement, and extend a hand when others are in need. Lord, fill our hearts with your peace and empower us to be a force of unity and love in a world that so desperately needs to see it. Let our actions be a reflection of your goodness and may everything, everything we do, Lord, point back to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here tonight on The Mobile Sanctuary. I really hope and pray that this session has given you something to think about. 
and has hopefully given you some valuable insight into building a stronger relationship and friendship with someone around where you are. Remember, relationships are a reflection of God's love, and when we approach them with humility and patience and a commitment to peace, we can help create connections that can truly last a lifetime. All right, next week, we're gonna be back with another session, so stay tuned for that and keep seeking God in all things. Until then, I'm Pastor Phil, and this has been Church Anywhere. We will see you next time. Welcome to the Mobile Sanctuary, where the broken find their way. In the quiet of your heart, you're never alone. Welcome to the place you call.